Hi, welcome to Centerville Reports today. I'm Maureen Russell Hodson. You know, the Centerville Washington Diversity Council offers a lot of programs throughout the year. And today we're going to tell you about two really terrific upcoming programs. One is on November 6th called Voices and Stories, and the other one is the annual Martin Luther King Day Breakfast. But first off, we're going to talk about Voices and Stories, and here to tell us more, we have Georgia Mergler, who is the chair of the Centerville Washington Diversity Council, Donald Hubbard, who is the director of education and community outreach with DCDC, also known as Dayton Contemporary Dance Company, and Shauna Hickman Matlock, who is the director of education services with DCDC. And thank you all for being here. Thanks, um, Thank before you. we get into DCDC, because I know we're all excited about that, um, Georgia, let's talk about the Diversity Council and how you all came about this idea for Voices and Stories. Sure. The Diversity Council has been around, it, it started with a group of citizens in about 1999 who came together really at the impetus of Tim Dressman, who was the head of St. Leonard's at the time. and. He, he really wanted, he saw a need to promote our community as a more inclusive and welcoming community to people of all different races, colors, religions. And he, he had this idea that Centerville maybe had a perception of not being inclusive. Right. Mm -hmm. And so he brought a group of citizens together from various entities and said, well, what can we do to to change that. And so the idea on the table was to do a Martin Luther King Jr. breakfast. So the first breakfast was held in 2000. Which we're is incredible. Yeah, I believe that. It's been yeah. 15 years. And so we're going to talk a little bit more about the breakfast right. later. But um, really the mission of the council is to promote a, a warm, welcoming, inclusive community for, for those who live, work, go to school, do business in Centerville and Washington Township. And it's comprised of about 200 members, uh, they, uh, ranging from people who represent the government agencies, the parks, the schools, senior center, libraries, but also individuals yeah, who just have a large, passion. Right? Yeah. yeah, membership is open to anyone who lives, works, goes to school, or has a business presence in Centerville, Washington Township. It's free, doesn't cost anything to be a member. And then the council hosts several recurring events that happen each year and one such event is Voices and Stories. I would say Voices and Stories is really a signature event. Isn't right. It? I mean people love this program. Exactly. We have a couple signature events yeah. that we do each year and this one always occurs in November. This year it's going to be on November the 6th at 7 p.m. at CHS in the Central Theater. But we started this program five years ago in 2000 and and basically it's just a forum for people to share stories of diversity. And we focused on different themes each year. We've done religious diversity before. We've right. done diversity in families, like the different kinds of families that are right. made up in our community. We did musical diversity last year. And so this year we, we're doing something a little bit different. Instead of recruiting people to come tell their personal stories, we invited DCDC to come tell the story of diversity through kind of a different lens using um, um, dance. So, um, and it's going to be exciting. And if you've never seen DCDC DC perform, this is going to be a great show. And, and you're really focusing on, um, it's like storytelling through, um, how is it, what is the actual theme of it? It's, it's called Step Up, Step Dancing up. Our Way mm -hmm. to Inclusion. That's it, Dancing Our yes. Way to Inclusion. Okay, so what, what can folks expect to see that night? Well, um, Step Up is a 45 minute narrated lectures demonstration. And it uses not only spoken word, but it uses modern dance as a catalyst for getting students to begin to take a look at diversity and inclusion. Uh, being that we're a melting pot in the United States, it's very important that students understand um, to respect and get to know others' differences because that's what's going to transform our communities, especially for them later in the workforce. And so we, we use it in a way that the students can identify with specific um, stereotypes and misconceptions. Uh, we target bullying, um, sexism, um, racism. gender, racism, um, body image, um, among others. And so it, it, uh, uh, we use uh, music, some that has lyrics, some that's just instrumental. Um, it can be literal and abstract at times with the movement. Um, it, we tend to get a very, very good response from the students. Um, most times afterwards, they can identify with one or more of the characters. Oh, so it's all done through dance. It's all done through dance. And it's, um, I know you're mentioning students because this is a program that you take out to schools, right? Yes, we had uh, about 2,500 students we presented to last year. And 
uh, Dayton Public Schools and a lot of parochial schools. But Very this is popular. also for, for people of all ages. Oh, right. all it's a great ages. message that we all Getting need to be reminded of. Colleges, we're starting it in, in colleges, yes, it's great. Typically they do it for students, but our event is for open to the public. Right. It's free of charge. No charge, yeah. It's open to anyone, students or adults anyone in between. And so for, for the people who are co coming to this, what, what is it that you would like for them to, to get out of this performance? I think it's important that we realize that we're all different, we're all important, and we want to teach everybody that we have to have inclusion. We have to include everyone. And it's really... And respect and, and respect. value. And, and I would say, it's, you said it's a 45-minute program, and really this lasts, a, it's about an hour, the total time, Georgia? Correct. So it's, it's about an hour. very manageable for families to come, and I think it, it's a great idea to bring right. your family. We usually have, we'll start out talking a little bit about what the council is and telling people more about it. So if they're interested in becoming a member, they'll know how to go about doing that. But then at the end, after the performance, we have a reception, and we have, you know, little snacks and goodies. Chance to meet and greet yeah, some folks. Yeah, meet and greet. Talk to diversity council members if they want to learn more. And I don't know if the folks well, from DCDC will stick around so they <laughs> yes, can they talk will. to the performers. Part of, that, part of our time, we will have a Q&A for the audience. Oh, okay, great. Yes. Okay, and, and for people who may not be real familiar with DCDC, give us a, a, a background on DCDC. Well, um, the Dayton Contemporary Dance Company was started back in 1968. Um, its founder was a Dayton native, Geraldine Blunden. Um, the company is a national and international touring company. It has two performing companies. It has its professional touring company as well as its um, pre-professional ensemble. Uh, both groups do perform the Step Up program. Um, even though we're rooted in the African American experience, we are a multicultural company. And uh, we present not only exceptional repertory performances, but it's very important for us to do arts integration in the schools. And so if other folks wanted to get in contact with you all about more performances, you have a website, that would be a good place to we go. We do yes. have a website, www.dcdc.org. Okay, easy enough, DCDC. Easy DC. enough. <laughs> <laughs> or, or you can call us at 228-DCDC. Oh, okay, well, terrific. Well, we look forward to seeing you again. That is on November 6th. It's at 7 o'clock at Centerville High School in the Central Theater, but you always have great directional signs to get people there. It is free and it's a great conversation starter for your family to talk about bullying, sexism, racism, body image, all the things that probably not only teenagers but all of us deal with regularly, yes. I would say. Yes. All right. Thank you so much. We'll, we'll be back to tell you. you more about the Diversity Council's breakfast in just a moment. Joining us now is Kara Badgley, who is the chair of the Martin Luther King Jr. Breakfast. Thanks for being here, Kara. Good morning, thanks. So we talked about Voices and Stories, which is the event happening on November 6th. This hap is happening actually um, in January. And tell us more about it. So as Georgia said earlier, it's our 15th an anniversary yeah. um, event, which is impressive <laughs> when you have an event for 15 years. And not only has it been- And continues to sell out That's every year, exactly right? what I was yeah. about ready to say. Oh, yeah. uh, right, so it is historically a sellout. So this year, the event is on Monday, January 19th at the golf club at Yankee Trace. Um, doors open at 7.30 in the morning. And so registration is about ready to begin. November 17th is when we open registration. Uh, this year we have online registration at our website, um, cwtdiversity.org. Okay. So you can go online, you do not need a PayPal account, just everything is right there. Um, or you can call 428-5669 if you just would like to register over the phone. Um, or we're mailing checks into the um, South Chamber Commerce. Okay, so this is the way you can get tickets, but the, right. the big event really is the actual breakfast and, and what goes on, and you've got a so, dynamic speaker, as right. always. Right, exactly. Our keynote speakers are <laughs> very exciting every year. Yeah. So this year um, is the 50th anniversary of Bloody Sunday. So Bloody Sunday was the first of three marches that resulted in the 1965 Voting Rights Act, which is a monumental victory in the civil rights movement. And uh, protesters led by a local um, minister, uh, crested the bridge in Selma, Alabama. They were going to march 54 miles to the capital, Montgomery, and they were protesting the death of Jimmy Lee Jackson, which was a local deacon who was murdered by an Alabama state police trooper at a um, nonviolent um, March mm -hmm. uh, just three weeks earlier. So he um, was murdered. So this was to relieve some the people's anger and anguish. And um, 
they marched over the bridge and when they were marching, they noticed that the state and the local police were waiting for them at the end of the other side. Right. And they were waiting for them with uh, billy clubs and tear gas. And so the peaceful protesters, um, well, it's called Bloody Sunday for right, a reason. Right. So our keynote speaker, James Perkins, was 12 at the time and was present at I that first that, march. Right? Yeah. Exactly. He and his family, it was women, children, men, um, and it was not a pretty scene. And um, so he will be here in January. So on it's January significant 19th. that he was 12 then, but now. Um, right, so he went on to become um, Selma's first black mayor in the year 2000, which was another historical um, you know, movement in Selma. And then he went on to actually do even more work within um, the civil rights with current topics, being that he published a book called The Same. Um, what is that called? The same sex marriage rights. So he wants to create a dialogue about why are single people uh, discriminated on tax laws. So he is just current, you know, he is still an activist for civil rights. And so through, throughout the breakfast, I mean, it's, real, it's a breakfast, mm -hmm. so you go and, and it's a buffet breakfast, but you also have tables of all kinds of folks who are there throughout the community, right? Everybody's Correct. invited. Correct. But you do need to register, and like we said, it is a sellout, so it's best to begin to be prepared to register November 17th when it opens and online or by calling. And tickets are $15, which is very reasonable. Oh, That's you get correct. a nice breakfast for $15, yeah. a really nice breakfast. And then you get to hear the keynote speaker, and he'll, he'll talk about his experience. Exactly, right? and he's going to actually have video. There was uh, video footage of Bloody Sunday that was aired on national TV at the time, live. And so we have that footage that we'll be showing at the breakfast as well. So you're only getting a slice of history right. listening to him. And I think that that was, that was part of what was notable about it, too, is that, it, from what I understand, the news footage of what transpired on that bridge captured the attention of the president, who was like, this right. is not okay right. in mm -hmm. America. So it was sort of the first time without dispute that you had to acknowledge that this kind of behavior was going on in our own country. And King actually came down to Selma once he heard about the events of what came, became Bloody Sunday. And so he then led the people three days later in another march. And the people who were, um, were, who were marching from Selma to Montgomery, they let the uh, city know, the transportation division of the state know. They were on the sidewalk. They were not causing any uh, diversion in everyday life. And so King came down after Bloody Sunday three days later and they marched again. And um, the police this time stepped aside and King decided to turn his people back and march back to the church as, um, as a, symbol, a symbol of honoring that they weren't right. aggressive and so they decided to go back to the well, church. Well, it's a great history lesson and you look at both of your programs with voices and stories, with learning about you know these same issues that we were dealing with 40 years ago, mm -hmm. still 50, present yeah. today um, and things that we, we need to discuss. Right. right. Yeah, and so we want to make sure that you can get tickets for the breakfast. Again, you want to go to cwdiversity.org. CWTdiversity.org. CWT or, is that right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> or call 428-5669. Okay, or, and then for Voices and Stories, again, that's November 6th. It's at 7 o'clock. That's a Thursday evening at Centerville High School in the Central Theater. That is free and open to the public. A great time to come, bring your family, bring your friends, or come by yourself because it's a great discussion. Right. Um, it sounds like Q&A with mm -hmm. DCDC and then following. And for more information about the Centerville Washington Diversity Council, you can, um, members are always welcome, right? We're always welcome, yes. If they come to one of these two events, we can uh, get them signed, signed up, up right up away. Right there. Yeah. <laughs> And, and for the breakfast, uh, ticket registration is about to open, open very November soon. November 17th, correct. And so for more information, again, we gave you the website. You can give a phone call or you can always call the City of Centerville, 433-7151, or you can visit our website, centervilleohio.gov. Ladies, thanks so much thanks, for your time and for sharing all of this great information. We'll look forward to seeing you at Centerville High School Theater on November 6th. Thanks for watching.